Today I'm uh, cruising around chasing swarms. Uh, I've got a bunch of bees, hopefully to pick up um, two, maybe three swarms today. Um, so I'm back in my old neck of the woods, or back towards my old neck of the woods near uh, Kyneton and Drummond. It's not quite as far over as uh, Trentham and Aylesford. Um, uh, but yeah, let's see what the day brings. So I've arrived at my first stop, Drummond. Now up that hill, that hill has got some special childhood memories for me. Because I think I was 12, 13, 14, something like that. And on top of that hill, um, we were visiting um, a friend of my mum's who's got a house um, up the side of the ridge over there. Or she had a house, she's moved on since. And um, uh, we were sort of, you know, we were told to sort of get out from underneath foot. And we said, oh, well, we'll go for a walk and go up the hill. And my mum's friend said, uh, be careful up there because there's scorpions on top of the hill. So we were up there like a shot. And I caught a whole stack of them and I brought them home and I put them in, um, in um, a fish tank which I had empty at that stage. And I, I, I don't know how long I kept them for, but um, that was awesome. Yeah, one of, one, of, one of the many things that I did to freak out my mum. Uh, my brother freaked my parents out by injuring himself all the time. I freak my parents out by while doing things like that. So here we are, first lot of bees. Now the, someone um, has already had a, a crack at trying to get them um, for me. Um, so the good news is that they're still here. Um, the bad news is that they're on a post on the ground, which makes... Yeah, it's going to make this tricky. Other thing is I'm glad I had those straps nice and tight because those things have shifted around a bit. That's not so cool. Hmm. I'm wondering if that might be enough. Well that, that looks like it's working. So you see, you've been getting close to them. They've got, they all, they've got their bums in the air, they're all clustering around that entrance. This is a really old hive box which has been, you know, used over many years so it probably smells awesome. Um, this is the hive that I did the split on at the start of the season. I think it's great for this job of capturing like a difficult swarm because they're just loving that. See all those bees lined up with their bums in their air fanning saying, yep, come here, come here. And we've got more bees, more bees forming back on the post. You know what, that, that scoops better. Ugh, what are they doing on the other side of the post? Oh wow. <laughs> right, I think I might go to the other side of the fence and grab them. <laughs> Big cluster on the other side. Oh, that's much easier. Without the fence in the way. Probably don't need my full suit for this, but I think I would have been more comfortable if I'd had it. So I'm just clearing more of the grass away so I can get a better scoop if they come back. Oh.
Oh, well, I was going to say we'll just leave them <laughs> paint, and now they're back on this side. So, let's see how I go with this. Oh, it's so much harder working through the fence. Alright, come on, off you come. How's the other side look now? There's a few, but not that many. All right, now I'm going to say it's done. We'll come back in a while. Okay, so the um, swarm I was getting in Kiton was a bit of a wash because, um, well, they left apparently 20 minutes before I got there. But I just got notification of one in Wood End, and so I've, I've tootled down the road, and I'm now here to try my luck at this other one. Okay, so this is not a simple one because it's not a swarm, it's now a hive, yes. So there's a little hole underneath the rafter there where they're coming in and out. It's actually quite crappy um, building tech. Gaps like that, it's, all, it's asking, especially with a cavity underneath, yeah. asking for bees to move in. Well, not a swarm, but a cutout. So I think the plan, my strategy there is I'm gonna leave them until next week. And after a week or so, the, they should have drawn out a bunch of comb. They'll, uh, the queen will have started laying in that comb. And there'll also be a bit of honey, well, a bit of nectar rather, won't be honey yet, um, and pollen, uh, which means they'll have some investment in that comb. And so then when I crack those boards off the cavity and I'll get the comb into some frames, uh, it'll be worthwhile the bees following it. Um, and there's a greater chance I'll be able to find the queen because she'll be on the comb. Whereas at the moment, she'll be running around in that cavity somewhere. Um, I don't know if that thinking's right, I don't know if that's a good strategy or a good way to think about it, but um, the alternative would be to just come tomorrow with a full suit and tools and stuff. But um, I think leaving it for a week or so is the way to go. Um, so yeah, I'll, um, I'll <laughs> I'm not sure what to do next, probably back to Kyneton. Yeah. But anyway, we'll see. Well, I was just cruising along, heading back to pick up the swarm, and I saw a snake on the road that someone had hit. But then I saw the most massive blue tongue. I was just sitting here. Where was it? I think it was in the shade. Ah, oh, I've got Buckley for finding it in this. Unless I can scare it and it runs. Like for such a fat, stumpy lizard, you wouldn't think they'd move that quickly. When they want to, they take off. Ah, that would have been so cool! Ah, what do we got? A little copperhead. So just to give you some scale. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I might take it back to the kids, show the kids. Normally I don't like using queen excluders um, because, well, I don't like dictating to bees where they go um, in the hive. If the queen wants to go up a layer and lay eggs up there, well then that's up to it. But where I do like using queen excluders, especially in a, in a swarm like this where I've kind of really, you know, it hasn't been simple and I've disturbed them a fair bit, uh, I want to make sure they stay in that box. I want them to have gone. So I put the queen excluder on the very bottom so that the bees can come and go, but the queen is held inside the hive. And that way, if they do want to leave, they're not going to leave without her, so they'll stay, and sooner or later, they'll start setting up shop and um, drawing comb, and once they start doing that, well then, they'll start 
Well, they, um, they look like they're getting themselves settled. Well, that was a lot hotter than <laughs> than I thought it would be. Um, it's 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 not first thing in the morning. It's nine o'clock. Kids are off at school. Um, it's not a warm. It's a warm day, but it's not a hot day. But far out. I'm not sure if it's the um, the beard and the hair, or just it's a hot work to do. But um, I am sweating. And then, Lise, do you like bees? Yeah. Do you like honey? Yeah. Very beautiful. Oh, a guy is coming out. Do a bee coming out? Is watching bees better than watching TV? No. <laughs>